Hello and welcome to Mobility Mastery Monday. I'm Alicia and this is the place to be if you want to lose the pain, lose your fear of pain, learn to trust your body and do what you love for life. Have you ever wondered if you're doing your foam rolling or self myofascial release techniques correctly? If so, today's episode is for you. I'm going to answer the most common frequently asked questions that I get about foam rolling and fascial release using foam rollers and lacrosse balls. So number one is how often should you be foam rolling? It's the number one question I get asked and the answer is actually it's pretty individual, but generally speaking, a few times a week, three to four times a week maybe, like when you go to work out um, or at home when you can think of it is enough, plenty actually, for general fascial health. Um, but if you're working on a problem area, like if you have pain and you're going after a certain area looking to relieve the, or eliminate the pain, then you might want to do daily work on that particular spot. Um, this is kind of up to you, so you'll have to get to learn your body. And generally speaking, you'll also need less as you do it. So as time goes on, you'll probably need to do um, maybe twice a week. Let's say you started at four, maybe a month or two later, you're only looking at twice a week because the fascia is staying pretty healthy. So just listen to your body and get to know its needs. Um, you can actually overdo it, which brings us to number two. Should you be getting sore or bruised from your foam rolling or fascia release work? So the short answer to that is no. You shouldn't be getting sore or especially bruised from doing this work. And if you are, then something's a little off and you'll want to make some adjustments. Um, if you're getting sore or bruised, chances are you're digging into your tissue as opposed to pinning it and using movement to release the fascia or get the fascia to actually release itself. Um, typically, we get sore or bruised from some, an outside force coming in and digging in and kind of bruising that tissue. This can also happen if you're using a really knobby or super hard foam roller, which I don't recommend. And if you need help choosing the type of foam roller that's best for you, wherever you're at, starting or on your foam rolling journey, I do have a video for that and we will link to it right here. So go ahead and click that if you need help finding a foam roller to choose for you. If you do find yourself getting a little bit sore or bruised, it's not the end of the world, nothing's super wrong, just back off. Know that your body's kind of reacting a little bit to whatever you're doing, and you can certainly adjust things so that it doesn't happen in the future. So I would either back off the intensity, back off, um, maybe use a softer roller instead of a harder one, um, make sure you're not digging into the tissue, that you're pinning it and releasing it, or don't do the technique quite as frequently. So if you were doing it every single day, maybe go to every other day or every three days, something like that. Now, the reason I don't advocate soreness or bruising as a good thing, um, I know other people do. Um, it's my position that it's not a good thing. And the reason is, uh, even if you're doing some good, the fact that you're sore or bruised, to me, indicates that damage has been created. So you might get some inflammation, um, if you're bruised, that actually means that little small um, blood vessels have popped and blood's <laughs> leaking into your soft tissue. To me, that's not a good thing. So it's not the end of the world, but I don't advocate it. I don't endorse it. I don't think it's a sign of something healthy occurring. Okay, and this brings us to number three, which is should this work, fascial release, hurt? <laughs> and the short answer is yes, it actually will while you're doing it. It shouldn't hurt after, you should feel better. Um, but unhealthy fascia hurts when compression or weight is applied. So the healthier your fascial system is, the less it's going to hurt. So the more of this work that you do, the better it'll get, the easier it'll get. Um, fascia actually goes through four phases. I've kind of figured out working with people. Sucks a lot, that's when it's really unhealthy. Sucks a lot less, it's getting healthier. Feels kind of good. And that's the fun part, <laughs> when it feels good, it actually feels like a massage. And then it'll go to feeling like nothing. So the healthier your fascia is, or when it's at optimal, it'll actually feel like nothing, or it'll feel good. If, when you start this process of releasing your own fascia and it hurts a lot, don't worry, you are not alone. Most of us have unhealthy fascia to varying degrees, so it's not you. <laughs> um, just stick with it. It'll actually get better and better. Um, probably within a month, you're going to notice a significant, like massive difference. You'll probably be in the feel good or almost feels like nothing category if you stick with a regular practice. And kind of following up on the last question, I get asked this quite a bit. 
Will foam rolling or releasing the fascia in the IT band or quads ever feel good? <laughs> um, I can't tell you for sure because every body is a little bit different. Those two muscle groups certainly are like the worst. Um, maybe just be glad you're not in my office me stepping on you because you would have 140 pounds on you and I have definitely made people cry. Although the good news is you actually get it over with faster that way. But yes, the quads and IT band are horrible. It's not fun. Yes, you should get them to a place where they feel better or it doesn't suck a lot. So those four phases will happen with the quads and IT band too. If you're a super athlete or a professional athlete where you just use your quads and IT band a lot through something like running, um, maybe ultra running or um, cycling, then your quads and IT bands are gonna be super wicked adhesed and restricted. And I would probably recommend for you a daily foam rolling regimen on those particular muscles and you should see a significant difference within a month or two. And finally, the question is, how long should you be doing each technique and each spot? So let's say you're working those quads and IT bands and you find a really good, wicked, horrible spot that you're working out. How long should you stay on there? Um, the general idea that I give is to, you wanna stay on there, if you're doing it correctly, 20 to 40 seconds. So what I mean by that is if you're doing it correctly, if you've really pinned that spot well and it's staying pinned and you're moving and actually releasing it, 20 to 40 seconds of that is plenty. You do not want to go over that. That probably will overdo it and actually make you sore. So spend enough time learning how to do this work right and then you can be super efficient with it. You can get in there and like 20 seconds on each spot and that's really all you need to do. So I definitely advocate learning how to do it right and then going through this process as quickly as possible because don't we want to get on with our lives? Like we don't want to spend most of our time foam rolling. Now, depending on the muscle group you're in, you might find anywhere between two and five spots and this is very individual. So you might find, let's say, you know, three spots in your quads and you'll spend 20 to 40 seconds or an average of 30 seconds on each of those. It's really only a minute and a half. Um, for smaller areas like the biceps, you might only find one spot or you might find two really good ones. Um, so it is individuals so who have to get to learn your body and what it needs. And this also changes throughout the year, depending on your lifestyle and sports habits. So just, you know, cultivate a practice of listening to your body as you go through your practice of using the foam roller and lacrosse ball for fascial release. So there you have it. The most frequently asked questions I get on how to do this practice correctly. So grab your foam roller or lacrosse ball and get started. Let me know how it goes for you. Um, of course, if you want exclusive updates emailed to you every week or new episodes emailed to you, you can subscribe on mobilitymastery.com. You can subscribe for new episodes here on YouTube that come out every Monday. And if you like this video, then please like and share it. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I hope you're learning to trust your body so you can adventure through life with confidence. Until next time, get curious, get moving, and be unstoppable.